next guest, she, you've probably seen her because she's been on many Everything. shows. Yeah, like Everything. Yes. Superstore, which is one of my favorites. Modern Family. Uh, Heart of Dixie. And um, she also is her, uh, she's also a film critic. That's and, right. And um, you can see her once a week, every Wednesday at 4 LA time on um, UBNradio.com, which is Tony Sweets Entertainment and her net radio talk show. So she's like a sister in like, internet radio that's like so exciting so yeah. we're probably gonna have a lot of questions for her to be like how can we make it better <laughs> <laughs> we're so new at this can you teach us things but um teach please, us things. At least, please teach us things please welcome carla renata to the show yay hey. how are you Ooh, Lord, let me come with the girls oh, oh no <laughs> that we was like, it was here. like great torpedoes we okay <laughs> we want to see your curves girl <laughs> wait let me see okay here we go. <laughs> I was giving you great torpedoes. It's like launch. Okay. I was in the bathroom having to calm mine down. I was oh. like, oh, this shirt really What's gives everything today? away. I don't know. It's oh. a fabric. It's that a was fabric crazy. issue. Yeah. So, um, so you've been on so many things. Actually, so many that at once you were on four different yep. shows. Recurring, recurring. recurring I was on recurring four on four shows at one time. Yep. I how, sure was. how was that for you? It was kind of fun. It was a lot of fun because I never had a chance to get bored. You know, actors, when you're in between gigs, you're like, rah, 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 rah. yes, I didn't have time <laughs> for that because I was too busy going to this fitting for that show. And, you know, this call time for this show. And then it was it was great. I enjoyed it. That's it was good. Great. Did you have to, like, hand your schedule over to someone and just be like, I figure this out? I had a manager and my management and my agents would figure it all out because oh, I was like I can't yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like, what you have a manager for yeah right? apparently. It was, it please was manage much, this but it was fun and I was lucky that I think there was only maybe once or twice where the schedules kind of coincided with each other but we were still able to work it out that's so true. how was it for you having to kind of figure out or navigate the characters that you had to play I mean four different characters or were they kind of similar or no or how was that for you they weren't similar on Heart of Dixie I played um, a Southern Alabaman, Alabamian hairdresser. <laughs> However you say it. However you say it. I played a hairdresser from Alabama, so I had to have a Southern accent for that. And then on Shake It Up, I was we were based in Chicago, so I'm from St. Louis, so it wasn't oh, that okay. far right. accent-wise okay. for me. And then on How to Live with Your Parents for the Rest of, the li rest of Your Life, I had to have no accent at all. Like okay. it had to be very because I was a um, a teacher. Okay, I was okay. A, a teacher, so I had to be had to be very straight laced, and I had to take the tone of my voice up a little bit so that I, I, my voice wasn't so deep. Okay, and then on um, how did Dixie shake it up? How to live with your parents, <laughs> Mr. Box Office, Mr. Box Office. I had to talk pretty much like this, and tone it, bring it down even lower. Wow, and then to my tone of voice and then sometimes I would pitch it up if I was flirting with one of the characters I would pitch it up oh so interesting. yeah it was it was all about it was all about my vocal choices character wise interesting and then my clothes were different so when you're in different clothes you automatically act different sure you know that's for I mean? sure and different hair I had different hair that is so fun that no is wonder so you fun. had a blast yeah, yeah it was great oh my like gosh a great time yeah. mm -hmm. so you're also a critic and you know um some, something happened to me today. I, I don't know if you guys heard that they're doing an, a female Ocean's Eleven movie. Well, Ocean's Eight. It's ever it's called Ocean's Eight, and I made a joke on my Facebook wall that was like, "I did see this craziness yeah, that ensued." The craziness ensued. I was like, "Oh yeah, sure. We only get seventy percent of that too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why if we're gonna do a reboot, why not do Ocean's Eleven with women?" Right. And I got into a thing with someone who was like, "I felt like he was saying you should be grateful you get anything." <laughs> Yeah, That's how it read to me. It read that, that way to um, me, too. It was like, um, th when was the last time there was a movie with eight starring ladies? Yeah. I'm like, and I um, was kind you know, of like, he's like, whole, oh, never. This whole woman hating in movie thing is getting on my nerves. It is, you know, right? you mentioned that I'm a film critic. They, I got invited to do um, three days of press for Ghostbusters. And um, it was, it was I would, they included me with a bunch of mommy bloggers. So, all the women were moggy, mommy bloggers except for me. I'm not mommy to a human. I'm mommy to a Maltese. <laughs> but anyway, I was there. Right, right. And um, there was leading up to just the, the press junket, it was a lot of stuff online going, this is going to suck. It's all women. And there were some media outlets that were told to embargo their reviews until closer to the time that it was going to release. And people were leasing 
reviews early and kind of dogging out the fact that it was women and it wasn't the same. Mm. This is the thing about iconic films like Ocean's Eleven, Ghostbusters, Aliens, any of those types of Star Wars. Whenever you take a franchise that is beloved for whatever reason and you reboot it, there's always going to be somebody right. that's going to have something to say about it. It wouldn't matter what the circumstances were behind it. Right. But the fact that there's still, I, I saw a documentary not too long ago where they were talking about it, that uh, Joan Rivers produced. And it was all these female comedians talking about the fact that men say they're not funny. Oh, still. That men say that women still. are not funny. Still. Yeah. Oh, you're right. That yeah. the men say women are funny. And I'm like, what? I don't understand where that came from, and I don't understand why they say that, but funny is funny. It doesn't matter whether no, you doesn't are female, doesn't matter whether you're male, doesn't matter whether you're skinny, fat, whatever you are, and fat, P-H-A-T. Right, um, right. It doesn't right. matter, you know, what you are. Funny is funny, exactly. and you're either going to laugh or you're not. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. Exactly. Like, I'm going to need people to stop. No, that. because yeah. I, I had a whole conversation, actually, with someone who was on my team about exactly how they believe that women aren't actually as funny or as marketable or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't I don't understand. Like, I don't understand that at all. Why? Why? OK, so first of all, isn't Ghostbusters the reboot? It's not supposed to be the same, because then if it was the same, then you'd be like, well, this is boring because why would you go? This is the same. Yeah. I've already seen this movie. The whole point is to kind of exactly. give it some new fresh life. Yeah, make it fresh, make right. it make it new for a whole new generation, because people forget there's a whole generation of people that don't even know what Ghostbusters is. Right. And, no idea. And P.S., the original Ghostbusters was scary as hell. It was. Like, it was scary. It, well, was. And it I, wasn't like, it was ha, 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 ha. Right. And I didn't, when I watched it, I was a kid and I didn't think, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't watch that and go, oh my gosh, this is hilarious and this is the most entertaining film and wow, I, this is, this is, this should win an Oscar. <laughs> but for some reason, with the female version, people are like, oh, it's terrible. It's just, and you the, know there's what? no plot. There's no, there's no story. Which line. all of that there's is no not joke. true. It was I'm, funny, y'all. It was, so, we saw it, was funny. it was funny. We, it yes. was great. It, there were some moments it. where I was like, okay, if they told one more cat joke, I was going to throw something at the screen. The cat jokes, I was like, okay. <laughs> the first time it was funny, but now I'm going to need y'all to shut that down. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't having it. And I kind what I did like about it is that. If they were going to get four women to do it, that's what, those were the right four women to get. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the first thing. The second thing is I kind of like that they flipped the whole chauvinistic thing oh, and I made them that. chauvinistic toward a guy as opposed to the other way around. Yeah, totally. The only thing I kind of was like, mm, y'all could have did this a little better. They didn't flush out the relationship between Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig's character very well. Well, mm. not to deserve that crazy ending that happened. Yeah. The ending felt a little like... Uh, like stretching something that wasn't oh, there really there. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Oh, nice. And speaking of which, Les, that whole thing with Leslie Jones, remember that? Oh, yeah, oh, we talked about that on here. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to segue for just one second. So did y'all see online the thing about Dasha Polenko from Orange is the New Black? Do you know which one she is? Oh, on yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, so there was, yeah. did you see that that drama online with her about how she went to a designer to get something to wear and they said, we don't have any, we don't have any clothes in your size? I did. And so I, she decided she's going to start her own her clothing own line. line. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, she's but gorgeous. that's the kind of thing that just makes me a little bit angry is that why do we have to start our own line when we're 67%? Yeah. Uh, we're the majority. Exactly. Wh why is it... Why is that even happening? Like why one why do we have to start our own clothes, clothing line in order to get clothes exactly. that fit us or make us feel good? Melissa, Car M Melissa McCarthy doing the Ghostbusters uh, junket said that she started her own clothing line because every time she had an event, she couldn't find anything to wear or she had to buy something and have, you know, have things it. put together. And she was like, this is crazy because she was spending a buttload of money doing that. Oh, She's I'm like, sure. I'm not doing that anymore. No. Well, because you, when you go to one event, you can't wear the same thing to the next event. You because then yeah. you'd be made, you would be ridiculous. Well, because we have the internet. Because back in the day, honey, when you were taking Polaroids <laughs> and film pictures, <laughs> nobody knew what outfit you had on because the only right. person that saw your outfit was you. But nowadays, when you're posting stuff online, yeah. Folk can go through your feet and go, oh, she wore that dress like three times. Absolutely. She must have had no clothes. Right. No, I just it like this dress. Up. Yeah, I like it. Kicked it kicked it up You're some right. not notches for sure. <laughs> oh. but, but when out of one out of four people you meet in the world are going to look like us. Do you right. know what yep. I mean? That's the reality. Yep. And that's the thing that you had to go to a mall where they were like, we only have five stores and they're all in California of a brand that you 
you that know I mean? love. Yeah. So like I, that's yeah, for sure. that's crazy pants. Like it's time to get over this. It's time to like, and and it is going to take celebrities and people who have the media's attention to say. Why don't you carry this in my size? And I love that Leslie stood up. And oh, that. I love that Leslie stood up. I love that Dasha stood up. And then let's just talk about this for a second. So I had a costume fitting for a TV show, and I told them my sizes, and I told the truth. Because, you know, sometimes you kind of get the sizes that you wish you were when you finish your diet <laughs> you know, as opposed to what you really are. Or, you know, after you've been to spin class for three weeks, you get them that size. But I'm like, let me go ahead and tell the truth because I'm really not trying to have no drama. So I told the truth, gave them my sizes. And when I, and when I came in, they had shirt-wise, like the pants I knew were going to be good. But when, when shirt-wise, it was one muumuu after another. She pulled this one shirt off the rack, and I was like, yeah, that's, go that's going to be too big. Because I specifically told them, I'm like, yeah, I'm busty, and yes, I have a butt, but I'm a petite person. Yeah. I have really narrow shoulders. You know, you have to, and I'm curvy. I'm curvy. Yeah. That curvy is the operative <laughs> word. Right. Child, they pulled out one muumuu after another, and I was just like, and even she was embarrassed at the fact that that happened. Yeah. Yeah, Kathy and I have talked about this a lot, actually. On Kathy, you had a crazy I had a, experience, I had a too. crazy experience with it. was so bad that um, she came in after a second fitting with a size 22 tank top, and I'm a 14, and thought that that would be okay. And I wore it. And they adju they adjusted it to fit, but it didn't. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Cray -cray. Which is yeah. kind of offensive, because you would never do that you would never see that happen to a no, size two. No, you would never two. ask a size two. No, they do. Actually, I used to be a size, a size two. They do do it when you. They do it when you a size two, four, and six two. They just don't. But do But they it. don't bring you a size twelve when you're a size two. No, what they, <laughs> no, what they, they do when you a size two is they bring you like a size four and a size six, and it's still going to be too big because not every store carries a size two. Right. Sure, so sure. They, right. So they will, they will bring you stuff that's bigger, and then they'll you know, throw some tabs in the back or some darts or something in the back yeah. and take it in. But they, they, they love to take stuff in because it's easier for them to take it in than it is to take it out. Oh, no, yeah. for sure. And like if she if she had brought in maybe a size 16 or an 18, that's you, oh, great. That's 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 you bring, a, you bring in a, a double, Ten, double the double size? Yeah. I mean, that's a just nuts. a little bit little absurd. Nuts. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about your workout because you said that you do yoga and, and spinning. spinning. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that next when we come back with Plus Fits.